The Grey Wolf one evening twilight in spring a young english student who had wandered northwards as far as the outlying fragments of scotland called the orkney and shetland islands found himself on a small island of the latter group caught in a storm of wind and hail which had come on suddenly it was in vain to look about for any shelter for not only did the storm entirely obscure the landscape but there was nothing around him save a desert moss at length, however, as he walked on for mere walking's sake, he found himself on the verge of a cliff, and saw, over the brow of it, a few feet below him, a ledge of rock, where he might find some shelter from the blast, which blew from behind. Letting himself down by his hands, he alighted upon something that crunched beneath his tread, and found the bones of many small animals scattered about in front of a little cave in the rock, offering the refuge he sought he went in and sat upon a stone the storm increased in violence and as the darkness grew he became uneasy for he did not relish the thought of spending the night in the cave he had parted from his companions on the opposite side of the island and it added to his uneasiness that they must be full of apprehension about him at last there came a lull in the storm and the same instant he heard a footfall stealthy and light as that of a wild beast upon the bones at the mouth of the cave he started up in some fear though the least thought might have satisfied him that there could be no very dangerous animals upon the island before he had time to think however the face of a woman appeared in the opening eagerly the wanderer spoke she started at the sound of his voice he could not see her well because she was turned towards the darkness of the cave will you tell me how to find my way across the moor to shielness he asked you cannot find it to-night she answered in a sweet tone and with a smile that bewitched him revealing the whitest of teeth what am i to do then my mother will give you shelter but that is all she has to offer and that is far more than i expected a minute ago he replied i shall be most grateful she turned in silence and left the cave the youth followed she was barefooted and her pretty brown feet went cat-like over the sharp stones as she led the way down a rocky path to the shore her garments were scanty and torn and her hair blew tangled in the wind she seemed about five-and-twenty lithe and small her long fingers kept clutching and pulling nervously at her skirts as she went. Her face was very grey in complexion and very worn, but delicately formed and smooth-skinned. Her thin nostrils were tremulous as eyelids, and her lips, whose curves were faultless, had no colour to give sign of indwelling blood. What her eyes were like he could not see, for she had never lifted the delicate films of her eyelids at the foot of the cliff they came upon a little hut leaning against it and having for its inner apartment a natural hollow within smoke was spreading over the face of the rock and the grateful odour of food gave hope to the hungry student his guide opened the door of the cottage he followed her in and saw a woman bending over a fire in the middle of the floor on the fire lay a large fish broiling the daughter spoke a few words, and the mother turned and welcomed the stranger. She had an old and very wrinkled but honest face, and looked troubled. She dusted the only chair in the cottage and placed it for him by the side of the fire, opposite the one window, whence he saw a little patch of yellow sand over which the spent waves spread themselves out listlessly. Under this window there was a bench, upon which the daughter threw herself in an unusual posture, resting her chin upon her hand. A moment after the youth caught the first glimpse of her blue eyes. They were fixed upon him with a strange look of greed, amounting to craving, but, as if aware that they belied or betrayed her, she dropped them instantly. The moment she veiled them, her face, notwithstanding its colourless complexion, was almost beautiful. When the fish was ready, the old woman wiped the deal table, steadied it upon the uneven floor, and covered it with a piece of fine table linen. She then laid the fish on a wooden platter, and invited the guest to help himself. 
seeing no other provision he pulled from his pocket a hunting knife and divided a portion from the fish offering it to the mother first come my lamb said the old woman and the daughter approached the table but her nostrils and mouth quivered with disgust the next moment she turned and hurried from the hut she doesn't like fish said the old woman and i haven't anything else to give her she does not seem in good health he rejoined the woman answered only with a sigh and they ate their fish with the help of a little rye bread as they finished their supper the youth heard the sound as of the pattering of a dog's feet upon the sand close to the door but ere he had time to look out of the window the door opened and the young woman entered she looked better perhaps from having just washed her face she drew a stool to the corner of the fire opposite him but as she sat down to his bewilderment and even horror the student spied a single drop of blood on her white skin within her torn dress the woman brought out a jar of whiskey put a rusty old kettle on the fire and took her place in front of it as soon as the water boiled she proceeded to make some toddy in a wooden bowl meantime the youth could not take his eyes off the young woman so that at length he found himself fascinated or rather bewitched she kept her eyes for the most part veiled with the loveliest eyelids fringed with darkest lashes and he gazed entranced for the red glow of the little oil lamp covered all the strangeness of her complexion but as soon as he met a stolen glance out of those eyes unveiled his soul shuddered within him lovely face and craving eyes alternated fascination and repulsion the mother placed the bowl in his hands he drank sparingly and passed it to the girl she lifted it to her lips and as she tasted only tasted it looked at him he thought the drink must have been drugged and have affected his brain her hair smoothed itself back and drew her forehead backwards with it while the lower part of her face projected towards the bowl revealing ere she sipped her dazzling teeth in strange prominence but the same moment the vision vanished she returned the vessel to her mother and rising hurried out of the cottage then the old woman pointed to a bed of heather in one corner with a murmured apology and the student wearied both with the fatigues of the day and the strangeness of the night threw himself upon it wrapped in his cloak the moment he lay down the storm began afresh and the wind blew so keenly through the crannies of the hut that it was only by drawing his cloak over his head that he could protect himself from its currents unable to sleep he lay listening to the uproar which grew in violence till the spray was dashing against the window at length the door opened and the young woman came in made up the fire drew the bench before it and lay down in the same strange posture with her chin propped on her hand and elbow and her face turned towards the youth he moved a little she dropped her head and lay on her face with her arms crossed beneath her forehead the mother had disappeared drowsiness crept over him a movement of the bench roused him and he fancied he saw some four-footed creature as tall as a large dog trot quietly out of the door he was sure he felt a rush of cold wind gazing fixedly through the darkness he thought he saw the eyes of the damsel encountering his but a glow from the falling together of the remnants of the fire revealed clearly enough that the bench was vacant wondering what could have made her go out in such a storm he fell fast asleep in the middle of the night he felt a pain in his shoulder came broad awake and saw the gleaming eyes and grinning teeth of some animal close to his face its claws were in his shoulder and its mouth in the act of seeking his throat before it had fixed its fangs however he had its throat in one hand and sought his knife with the other a terrible struggle followed but regardless of the tearing claws he found and opened his knife he had made one futile stab and was drawing it for a surer when with a spring of the whole body and one wildly contorted effort 
the creature twisted its neck from his hold and with something betwixt a scream and a howl darted from him again he heard the door open again the wind blew in upon him and it continued blowing a sheet of spray dashed across the floor and over his face he sprung from his couch and bounded to the door it was a wild night dark but for the flash of whiteness from the waves as they broke within a few yards of the cottage the wind was raving and the rain pouring down the air a gruesome sound as of mingled weeping and howling came from somewhere in the dark he turned again into the hut and closed the door but could find no way of securing it the lamp was nearly out and he could not be certain whether the form of the young woman was upon the bench or not overcoming a strong repugnance he approached it and put out his hands there was nothing there he sat down and waited for the daylight he dared not sleep any more when the day dawned at length he went out yet again and looked around the morning was dim and gusty and gray the wind had fallen but the waves were tossing wildly he wandered up and down the little strand longing for more light at length he heard a movement in the cottage by and by the voice of the old woman called to him from the door you're up early sir i doubt you didn't sleep well not very well he answered but where is your daughter she's not awake yet said the mother i'm afraid i have but a poor breakfast for you but you'll take a dram and a bit of fish it's all i've got unwilling to hurt her though hardly in good appetite he sat down at the table while they were eating the daughter came in but turned her face away and went to the farther end of the hut when she came forward after a minute or two the youth saw that her hair was drenched and her face whiter than before she looked ill and faint and when she raised her eyes all their fierceness had vanished and sadness had taken its place her neck was now covered with a cotton handkerchief she was modestly attentive to him and no longer shunned his gaze he was gradually yielding to the temptation of braving another night in the hut and seeing what would follow when the old woman spoke the weather will be broken all day sir she said you had better be going or your friends will leave without you ere he could answer he saw such a beseeching glance on the face of the girl that he hesitated confused glancing at the mother he saw the flash of wrath in her face she rose and approached her daughter with her hand lifted to strike her the young woman stooped her head with a cry he darted round the table to interpose between them but the mother had caught hold of her the handkerchief had fallen from her neck and the youth saw five blue bruises on her lovely throat the marks of the four fingers and the thumb of a left hand with a cry of horror he darted from the house but as he reached the door he turned his hostess was lying motionless on the floor and a huge gray wolf came bounding after him there was no weapon at hand and if there had been his inborn chivalry would never have allowed him to harm a woman even under the guise of a wolf instinctively he set himself firm leaning a little forward with half outstretched arms and hands curved ready to clutch again at the throat upon which he had left those pitiful marks but the creature as she sprung eluded his grasp and just as he expected to feel her fangs he found a woman weeping on his bosom with her arms around his neck the next instant the gray wolf broke from him and bounded howling up the cliff recovering himself as he best might the youth followed for it was the only way to the moor above across which he must now make his way to find his companions all at once he heard the sound of a crunching of bones not as if a creature was eating them but as if they were ground by the teeth of rage and disappointment looking up he saw close above him the mouth of the little cavern in which he had taken refuge the day before summoning all his resolution he passed it slowly and softly from within came the sounds of a mingled moaning and growling having reached the top he ran at full speed for some distance across the moor before venturing to look behind him 
when at length he did so he saw against the sky the girl standing on the edge of the cliff wringing her hands one solitary wail crossed the space between she made no attempt to follow him and he reached the opposite shore in safety